You know, I think the vaccines are definitely going to help us keep these variants at bay, but because the efficacy of the vaccines is reduced, uh, it, as compared to the wild type or the original version of the virus, we really are going to have to try a little bit harder with these variants to prevent what happened last year with the pandemic getting out of hand to happen again. So essentially, we're basically having a replay of the events of last year. If you think about the timing, right, January, end of January, early February, we're starting to see our first cases. If we don't want this to become a replay of last year, we are going to have to double down our efforts in order to keep this virus at bay. Um, and what about in terms of the length of the pandemic? What does it mean for the length of the pandemic? So, you know, if you think about it, Dr. Fauci has often talked of, of surge upon surge upon surge occurring. This is essentially pandemic upon pandemic upon pandemic. So as the virus spreads more, we're going to get more variants. As we get more variants, we're going to have more cases, which will lead to more variants. And so essentially it becomes an exponential growth of the variants themselves, which then leads to the timeline getting pushed out farther and farther and us having to flatten that curve even harder. Now, of course, the vaccines are gonna be instrumental in flattening that curve this year. It's a tool that we didn't have last year that we do now. But like I said, because the efficacy of the vaccines is reduced, there's a lag between the time we can get everybody vaccinated enough to slow down the spread, we really are going to have to double down those mitigation efforts. Uh, um, I heard some things about like potentially even like five years down the road. Do you think that's anywhere in reality? Well, five years, you know, I, it breaks my heart to say that that's possible. It is possible. But I also want to encourage everybody and tell them that we can reduce that to one year, one and a half years, if we all get on board. Now with the original coronavirus wild type, Scientists had estimated by the time everybody gets vaccinated, we get herd immunity, and we're really able to get our lives back to normal would be early 2022. Now that we have these variants, I'm hoping that they've only pushed that out by months and not by years. But again, that's really going to depend on how many of those cases we end up having, something that, that has yet to be determined and is yet within our control. Okay, and you touched upon this, but is it now more important than ever to get the vaccine out into, into people's arms quickly? That's absolutely true. More than ever, we need the vaccine. In fact, data has already shown us that the people that we have vaccinated with all five vaccination candidates, it has already resulted in reduced deaths and reduced hospitalization. So even the small little drop in the ocean of vaccines that we have done so far has started to make an impact. So that really inspires me that this vaccine is going to help turn things around for the pandemic. Now, people often ask which vaccine should they get? You know, should they wait for one vaccine? And I like to say, this is, this is not like choosing at a buffet. You wanna get the first vaccine that can offer you protection because the wonderful thing about all these vaccines is that they're performing so well. So even if their efficacy is a little bit reduced against these new variants, it's still performing a lot better than many of the other vaccines out there, such as the flu vaccine. So we have to be hopeful that they're gonna help us slow the spread of this infection. Okay. Um, I, I, I did ask this, but I kind of want to ask it in another way, see how, uh, what your answer is um, or how it changes. So should we expect, uh, let, me, let me say it this way, should we change our expectations about this pandemic being over soon? I think it's really important to temper our expectations because remember, we're running a marathon, not a sprint. Now, before the finish line was within our eyesight, you know, we were seeing the vaccines on the horizon, it was coming. Now that these new variants are in the mix, that finish line just got a little farther away. So we got to keep running just a little bit longer. And I think tempering our expectations will help us to be more compliant with the mitigation measures, which may bring that finish line back closer. So in a way, by changing the way that we think, we're actually going to make the reality that we want happen. We're going to help end the pandemic more quickly if we're prepared to stay in it for the next at least 12 to 18 months. Okay. Now with the vaccines that we do have, um, are you worried about them? Are you like, how, how does your perspective with the vaccines change when the variants emerge? A couple of things come to mind with respect to the vaccines. The first, I'm really happy that we have such good efficacy of the vaccines that even if they're a little less efficacious, 
that they're still working against the variants. But the second and more importantly is that within the span of a year, we already have so many variants that are behaving more aggressively. So it tells me that looking ahead to next year and the year after, if we want to turn this from a pandemic just into one of the regular illnesses that we deal with, we are probably going to have to tweak these vaccines. The nice thing about the messenger RNA vaccines, it's quite easy to swap out that code. So if we wanted to add the messenger RNA code for the new variants, that's a straightforward thing to do and we don't have to start from scratch. But I do think that we need to be mindful, not just of today, but of tomorrow, because we know that the virus can mutate and adapt relatively quickly. So we have to adapt our behavior and specifically adapt those vaccines relatively quickly. Okay, and I also wanted to, and I'm not even exactly sure the way to ask this question, but it's my understanding that having some vaccination can prevent the worst of even the variants, right? There's something there that people should be keeping in mind, not, not just throwing the baby out with the bathwater, like, oh, because the vaccine isn't as effective, um, it's not important anymore. What would you say about that? That's exactly right. So we know the vaccine works in a few different ways. One is it prevents, you know, severe infection, but it also can turn an infection into a milder infection. So even if you got coronavirus with one of these new variants, these vaccines would make it a less severe version of that illness than if you didn't have the vaccination. So partial protection, even if the vaccines are not working great against these variants, it's a, an important tool to have. A lot of people are asking the question of whether we should start adapting the vaccine now to attack these new variants. And I don't think that's a good idea because I think we're gonna be losing time where we could have protected people reasonably well against these new variants. And you know, as we talked about, made sure that they had a, a milder form of the illness, even if they got sick. So now more than ever, because of the new variants, it is so important to get vaccinated because even though the efficacy is slightly reduced, it still works really well against those new variants. Okay, great. Um, and uh, this is also probably things people don't wanna hear, but could we see another surge if these variants take off? It's not about could we, it's we will if they take off because it's just a matter of time. They're more aggressive. We're also getting some preliminary data from the United Kingdom that they may be up to 30% more virulent. The UK strain may cause more severe illness by up to 30%. So, you know, what happened in England where it quickly became the dominant strain is what might happen here in the United States if we don't start doing those mitigation measures, the vaccinations as a public health measure, and then all the other things we as individuals can do, double mask, keep social distance, wash your hands, avoid gatherings, even if you've been vaccinated. This applies to even those of us that have been vaccinated because as we said, those vaccines are not as effective against these new variants. And also we know that like, it's like 26 million people now have confirmed have, to have had COVID-19, but they say that the actual number of infections in the population is probably like four times that. So essentially a third of the US population has probably been infected. Is that providing any measure of protection against new infections? You know, what the scientific data has told us is that number one, reinfection is possible. So it's possible that some people don't have a potent antibody response and in others that antibody response can start to wane as early as two to three months after infection. We're also seeing some data about the new variants that people who were infected with the original version of the coronavirus have a higher risk of reinfection with the new variant. And what this suggests is those antibodies that we made to the original wild type coronavirus may not work as well against the mutant strains of the coronavirus. So even if you're somebody who's already had it recovered, don't lull yourself self into a false sense of, of security because you're still at risk for reinfection, particularly with these new, more aggressive, more contagious variants. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to ask, it's kind of a personal one. So my parents just got vaccinated. What would, and they only have their first yet. They haven't gotten their second one. Which uh, one? Um, Moderna. Moderna, yeah. Okay. Um, what would your advice be to them in terms of returning to normal life? So I would say that, you know, after your first dose of vaccine, you have partial protection about two weeks after you receive that dose. But it's really important to do a few things. Number one, 
uh, you know, don't get any other vaccinations because you don't want your immune system to be distracted with any other vaccine while it's trying to make antibodies to COVID. Number two, minimize your alcohol intake. Alcohol is known to be an immune suppressant, so you want to make sure your immune system is in tip-top shape. Number three, really try to time that second dose at exactly the right time. So four weeks is what we say for the Moderna vaccine, and you really want that to be the sweet spot for when you get it. If you get it too late or too early, it may affect the, the, the type of antibody response that you have. And then number four, even after you get that second dose, it takes about two weeks after that for you to have kind of that full 94% protection with the Moderna vaccine. But keep in mind that that still means there's a one in 20 chance that you could get sick and it still means there's a chance that you could pass it to other people. So myself having received two doses of the Moderna vaccine, I'm still double masking. When I see people, I'm still keeping my distance, washing my hands. The only people that I'm a little less cautious around are others who may have also potentially been vaccinated. But even with those people, really important to make sure that you don't let your guard down too much. Okay, that's the extent of my questions. I sure do appreciate it. There was just one last thing I wanted to yeah. mention, Mike. Did you see the case of co-infection with the new variant and the old, the two cases? Oh, um, well, I was actually going to ask you about, because there's a lawmaker who got vaccinated and then got sick. I've been hearing a lot about that too, but uh, we can talk tell about me, both, but the co-infection yeah. is very interesting. So co-infection is something that's relatively rare, but essentially means that you get both versions of the coronavirus at the same time. And now we have two documented cases of this having occurred in Brazil. We have seen this before occurring with influenza, for example, influenza A and influenza B co-infection, because essentially the two strains are behaving as two independent viruses. So you can catch them both at the same time. And the behaviors that predispose you to get one you know, not washing your hands, not wearing the mask, what have you, also predispose you to the other. The outstanding question that really remains in my mind is how many co-infections are out there because we're not genotyping enough. And number two, do these co-infections, when you get two versions at the same time, make you sicker? Because if they do, then certainly we're facing another public health challenge up ahead. Jeez, that's frightening. I know, right? Because there's not only two variants. <laughs> well, with flu, they you, do. They make you sicker. Could you have I a mean, triple infection? Rare, could you have a quadruple? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't think they yeah. were that different, that that could be the case. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to ask you about that, that, that politician, too, um, because, you know, I think a lot of people are assuming that once you get vaccinated, you're good. But what would you say about that instance where the politician got infected after getting the vaccine? You know, I would say there are a number of anecdotes of people actually getting the coronavirus after their first dose of vaccine. And there are a few reasons for that, in my opinion. The first is when your immune system gets a vaccine, it's suppressed because it's busy trying to learn how to fight, you know, the, the vaccine. Your immune system is a little bit suppressed because it's busy trying to make antibodies against the, the virus that you've just been injected with. So it lets its guard down and you could potentially catch other infections. The second reason I believe is behavioral because a lot of people after they get the vaccine, they feel their armor is up and they let their guard down. And we know that it takes at least two weeks after the second dose of the vaccine for Moderna and one week after the second dose for Pfizer to get full immunity. And you really shouldn't change your behaviors until you're fully vaccinated.